doing? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm um, I'm glad I've got you on. I'm surprised I got you on. Really? Aye. How? I'm always kind of... See, when I see people... Cause it's, I'd, I'd seen you'd followed the page and I'm like, I'm not going to jump on that right away. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it a couple of weeks. Because you always think people are so busy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'll throw a message on and just see if people want to come on. Aye. So it was a nice surprise. No, I... I I seen it and I, and I like to like do like local ones, you know what right. I mean, and try and help out as much as I can, you know what I mean. It's always nice to tell like my side of the story or exactly. what I've been up to or whatever. Right. So like I can help you, you can help me. It's right. like a win win. So I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Brilliant, mate. And if we've obviously just put the world to rights on emissions and, and all sorts. So let's get into <laughs> let's get into that show. You're obviously well known for, for being on the X Factor at a massively yep. young yes. age. Before we even get to that point, what was your plans at school? What did you want to do before all of this even kind of oh. came about? <laughs> was it always music or were you? <clears throat> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. So when I was in school, I, I get diagnosed with dyslexia. So I right. like, struggled in school, do you know what I mean? And I was always a guy that was like, would ask for like help and then when he'd tell me what to do and read it to me, I'd be like, oh, shit. So I don't want to ask again because right. I was like embarrassed. So like, I kind of like struggled in school a wee bit, but I get through it. Right. And before the whole X Factor thing, I was only what sixteen, so I really never, I don't, I never thought, mm. what, 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 what am I going to do in the future? Aye. I think only recently I discovered I probably wanted to be like a fireman, right? But my mum and dad told me I couldn't be a fireman because I suffered from asthma, pneumonia mm. in the lungs in the hospital, not when I was younger. Okay. So you can't be a fireman. Aye. And I'm like, I, I wish I could be a fireman. Now, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, so I had, I had, I had no plan. I think I always said I wanted to be a joiner and all, because I just right. like to go at the back and build bogies and Aye. mess with my motorbikes Aye. and be in the muck and all that. Do you know what I mean? Just get my hands dirty. Um, but I never I never had any set plan of, right. this is what I'm going to do when I'm older. Aye. I think X Factor is just a bit of work. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so how did that how did that <clears throat> come about then for you? With the whole X Factor Aye. thing. Um, so my mum and dad always knew that I could sing, mm-hmm. but... It, was, it wasn't until I got a wee bit older, like 14, 15, that it started to push it when I was about six or seven. I still tell this when I do my gigs and whatever. Um, my first ever karaoke song was Robbie Williams' Angels. Right. And my memory of that moment, that's got a picture of it. I'm in, I'm in Greece. Right. And I'm sitting in a bar stool and I've got a pool cue in one hand, this hand and a microphone in another. Right. And I've got a pair of my ma's high heels on. <laughs> No, there's a reason. The reason for the high heels is because I was playing pool before it, playing against my brother, and he's right. much taller than me. Right. There's 18 months between me and him, but he's really, really tall. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't reach up to the pool table because I was always dead, dead small. I always, I'm dead small now, I'm Aye. only five foot nothing. So I've got the high, my mom's high heels on, sending me up my tippy toes. So I picture me, the mic, the pool cue, what an idiot. And um, I belted out Robbie Williams' Angels, and I think ever since then, my mum and dad like, oh, he can sing, like, it's Aye. pretty good. And apparently, my grandfather could always sing. Right. Um, but it wasn't until I was about 13, 14, my mum and that started getting me gigs mm-hmm. um, and like pubs and clubs Aye. and all that and places where I had to leave at 10 o'clock at night because Aye, they like licensing and Aye. all that. And then I was just doing gigs and whatever and people were like, you're really, really good. And as a family, we always sat down on a Saturday night and watched the Chinese like with the X Factor when it was peak X Factor. Aye. And you still love it and phone in and vote and be like, they're going to win it and have <laughs> predictions before like the show's only two weeks into it, whatever. Um, so when I turned, ju- when I just turned 16 on November, in the January, I was like obviously back at school and whatever after mm-hmm. the Christmas holidays. And um, I seen that some, or some I, read, I read it or somebody told me that X Factor's now dropped age to 16. Right. So it used to be 18 Aye. that you could apply. So I was like, ah, why don't I just sign up for it? So there's me in my bed. I'd get to school the next day. It's about half two in the morning and I'm on my, <laughs> don't know, my son Ericsson. I'm knocking at 3310. <laughs> Can't remember what phone it was. It was an awful anyway. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, I'm like, oh, I'll just sign up for it. So I ended up signing up for The Voice and X Factor on the right. same night. I remember walking in my mum's bedroom and she was up doing something, I don't know, watching Crime Watch or something like that. <laughs> or what's that? What's that TV programme? They sell you mops and all that. And it's like oh, a cute, cute, QVC. cute eye. She was watching that. And I'm like, She's like, what are you doing up? You're just cool tomorrow. And I'm like, ah, I've just signed up for the X Factor. The voice is went, I right, have you? And I went, mean, I have, I have. Look, there's my application. She's like, you're not right. Is that good for you? So long story short, never heard it. And, and it was about a couple of months later, I heard back for the voice. Right. And the voice like, would like to come for an audition, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. 
Um, and I was like, right, okay. And I was like, all right, X Factor. I must not been good enough Aye. with my VT that I sent in, whatever. I'll just patch it. And then two weeks before I went to go and do the voice edition, X Factor emailed me. And I was like, ah, oh. What should I do? I was like, X Factor was bigger at the time Aye. the voice just started. I've Aye. always been an X Factor fan. So then I ended up going for the for the X Factor edition. But um I didn't know. I thought you just turn up on the day and you just rock up and see the judges. That isn't the case. I uh, just sing and go home hey, and that's aye, it. Aye, that's it. <laughs> There's me standing outside the STV with about 10,000 folk. Dermot's like, that. welcome to Glasgow. And I've got the big foam finger and that. <laughs> Dane, all that. Patter, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, what are doing here? This is mad. I'm never going to get through. Look at all these people. And they've started going to Manchester, London, Birmingham. <laughs> um, aye, and then that was kind of like the story of how I get into it. And now, and since I've been off the show, I've heard so many people get scouted for it. And right. I'm like, which means there's like four editions before you actually get shown on the TV. Right. And you skip all the aim and you just basically go straight to the judges. Ah, but there's right. me standing outside STV by way of passion doing a rain. X Factor, welcome to Glasgow. Dana, about 40 takes, been there since dude I caught in the morning. Oh, and I'd done it all the way through. I never get like scouted or anything like that. But I wouldn't change it for the world because I got to experience the full thing yeah do you know what i mean and see the see the early ones then who are the additions in front of when you're going in for, for well these at, the time, at the time at the time it was in the secc right. and it was just an empty room in the secc and they had the bleachers like the chairs with people just sitting in them and it was just like wee tiny booths for like me to you right. there's two people sitting in a, a chair and you just sing a cappella 30 seconds to them Jeez. and then they give you like a golden ticket but none of this is really filmed Right, the okay. outside the STV part is all filmed. I uh -huh. keep doing that as if I've got the phone finger. <laughs> <laughs> but all that's filmed, but the editions are not really filmed. Aye. So they give you a ticket and then they go, right, okay. And then you'll say, right, you've got another edition in an hour's time mm -hmm. in this room. And then they'd come and collect you, take you another room. Right. So at that time, I never knew. But then obviously later on the show, you're singing in front of producers, people right. that work with Sony, with X Factor Scouts, all these people that are that are making the yeah. show, you're singing for them. Mm -hmm. But to me, they were just people in just normal clothes. I don't know. Right. It could be Joe Blogs walking down the street. Are you know nervous they're... at that point? I because you don't know what to expect. There's right. me think I'm going to turn up and rock up and Louis Walsh is going to be sitting there and he's no, and I'm like, ah, what's going on here? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And you're singing in front of these people and you just see all these other people and you can hear them, you mm -hmm. can see them singing and you're going, oh my God, they're amazing. They're walking look going. And I'm like, ah, they never get through what chance have I got? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I was like, ah, it, it was it was really, really, really scary. Mm -hmm. And one of the additions I remember, it was sitting in front of the producers. I never obviously knew that at the time, but right. later on when I when I did the show, I found out that's who they were because they worked on the show. It was mm -hmm. four top producers. So there's me singing in front of them. And we're all just sitting, it's like a dentist, it's like a waiting room, there's just chairs and they're just in the room, and you can hear them playing guitars, singing, belting out these songs. Right. Amazing singers. Aye. And like, I remember this girl walked to it, can't remember what she sung, but she sung something. And I was like, oh my God, how'd you go on? And she's like, no, I never get through. And I'm like, what? I was bricking myself. Aye. I was like, she never get through. She was older than me. She was like a good looking lassie. Aye. She was like 19, 20, she looked good, had a cracking voice, sounded mm -hmm. amazing. I went, what chance have I got? Aye. Do you know what I mean? And, and just sung and then, they just said to me, right, if you get through to the judges, mm -hmm. we'll um, contact you within the next couple of months to let you know if you're through to that stage or no. Right. And I was like, right, okay. And then, see, it was like three months. I meant to get back to you three months past. Right. I never hadn't heard anything. Like four months, four and a half months. And then I got a random phone call. And they're like, ah, you've got an audition in front of the judges at the, I think it was the Hilton at the West End. Right. It, it, was, it, was, it was there. And then that was like my first ever audition. Gee, so had you, see when you left after that one where like, we'll, we'll let you know, in your head, did you think you were going to get a call no, back at that point? No, 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 because all, I heard all these other singers coming aye. out, aye, they get through, they never get through, and I'm like, ah, I went, nah, I've got no chance. So, but see, the thing is, I never signed up for the show being like, oh, I hope I, hope I make the live shows. I aye. just signed up for it, because that, that sounds no stupid or terrible, but... I was bored one night. It was like mm -hmm. singing at that point wasn't really like my passion. Like aye, I want to do aye. this. I was like, it's an opportunity. I like to sing. I watch it. Mm -hmm. Have a watch. I what am I going to lose? It? And if if I don't do it, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If I could look back in years to come, go, oh, wish I done that. Do you know aye. what I mean? So do you know what I mean? I just kind of just went into wing that prayer to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must have worked. So yeah. getting to the getting to the actual audition, then mm -hmm. how's yeah. the nerves at that point? Oh, I was, oh, 
I I'm shaking myself because my family were there, man, and we were at the hillbillies turning up my mini bus and all that. About six days old, jump out a bus, and I'm like, oh my god, Nicky's got the X Factor, all that part. And do you know it's so funny? I had like my first edition, I had like a you can obviously tell my mum dressed me. I get dressed in the dark. I've got, a, I've got a waistcoat on, a white shirt, and a pink tie. Horrendous. <laughs> um, and because of the first edition, they filmed outside STV doing the whole X Factor mm-hmm. thing. I had to wear that same outfit oh, again all the months later Jeez. to match up with the with the video recording they've oh, got. Same maybe me walking up to the te- up, walking up to the desk Aye. and getting your number and all that. Right. In case they caught that, they need to obviously edit it all together. Got you. So there's me. I've obviously launched this stuff out. I'm like, surrendous. I'm not getting seen deed with that one. And I'm trying to find this pink tie and I'm phoning up X Factor going like I can't find this tie. Where'd they get it? And I was like, I think it was in next. There's me on next try to find this pink tie and all that it was it was absolutely horrendous ended up i got i think i found the same pink tie it was on like amazon or something right. and the waistcoat and all that and all the same clothes <laughs> but honestly i can't believe it i was like i can't believe i'm wearing this again but it was so funny at the time and the thing is as well at that point you're then getting out but louis walsh gary barlow sharon, sharon and Nic- nicole, nicole scherzinger aye aye, 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 aye. It's one. it is and it, it was just it was so hard there was a girl on it years ago she, she was from like Fife or Perth her, her name was Jade right she was like dark hair tattooed girl sounded like Adele mm-hmm. so she done it a few years ago and I remember seeing her when I was there and I'm like your name's Jade Aye. she's like how do you know me I mean obviously you've done the show before Aye. so we, when we obviously turned up in the minibus and all that the X Factor were doing like a lot of filming with me Aye. and get me to do bits and whatever and I was like oh is this maybe a good thing mm-hmm. but I've seen them like do it in years I'm no naive I've seen them do it before and then shoot the people at the sky Aye. so I never ever get my hopes up mm-hmm. but that my mum was outside having a cigarette and that Jade was there right and Jade said to my mum your son's gonna do really well if your son's a really good singer and they seem really likeable for what I've experienced before in the show because this was her second or third time doing it right she went for what I've seen with your son and Aye. he's going to do well my mum, my mum told me that but I, di- I didn't be like alright okay I'm going to do Aye. well I just Aye. thought like it comes and it goes you know what I mean they could build you all the way up and just shoot mm-hmm. you in the sky do you know Aye. what I mean and crush your dreams as I would say so I never I never really ever get my hopes up but the nerves were, were, were shattered I got there I think about 8 o'clock in the morning right and they told me ah, you'll be on at 2 2 passes 4, 6, 8 it was at oh, 9 o'clock at night man. do you know what I mean I've already I've scrammed about six happy meals just sitting there <laughs> drank just and all that people doing warm-ups and me just sitting like that right? and are you then i take it it's the same as the early editions you're sitting <clears> listening <throat> to people and going fucking hell they're, they're well, incredible well at that point they've got like t- they've got the tv screens like this up and right. you can almost kind of hear them but you can't because it's in like a more secluded room right so you can't really see them but you see their reaction like, right. you can hear them if it's quiet and be like they are good right. and then they don't get through and they walk out to their family and go like that and you're like all the families want to buy you, bonner out, bonner eyes out, greeting you. Like, You're sitting for hours waiting. <laughs> I'm still waiting, you know what I mean? So it, it really, it, it really does get to you, but because I was 16, I was like, this is class. Look aye. at me, look at my lights and action. I'm ready to go, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I was like, this is brilliant. Um, oh, Nicholas, we need you here. Why I say this bit for the for the filming and all that? And it was just, <laughs> it was just mad. I just didn't think about it. I think now if I'm on it now, mm-hmm. not knowing what I know, I would be breaking it Aye. big time Aye. big time whereas then I, I was just freeze just enjoying a, it freeze a bird didn't, didn't care do you know what I mean whereas now I think if I don't know I'd be like oh no what am I going to say aren't I <laughs> and overthinking everything whereas at the time it was just enjoy it do you know what I mean enjoy the experience Aye. and that's I think one thing that I did that, that I enjoyed the most was I never thought about it mm-hmm. never like like wee small things like Jade saying oh he's going to do well or doing doing a lot of filming with me I just took it day by day. Aye. Literally, that Aye. was it. And how was, how was the feeling when you're actually in that room and they four are sitting in front uh-huh. of you? Because as much as you're chilled <laughs> about it, you're then, that's no, the reality, isn't it? I, 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 was, I wasn't really, ch- I was chilled as in, I'm like, look, if nothing comes of this, Aye. it is what it is. This Aye. isn't a make or break for me. I'm 16, I've got my whole life to live, do you know what I mean? Um, but then when you're in front of the judges, it, it's, it comes in you like a ton of bricks. <laughs> you're like oh no i'm here this is really it this is really really it um i and like being scottish as well and whatever and like you try to represent yourself right on like Aye. national tv so it's a lot of english people end up doing really, really well and scottish really don't or when you hear somebody scottish on tv you're like oh. Aye. Aye. do you know what i mean Aye. so so you're 
but I just tried to be myself, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, no overthink it, but when you're standing in front of them, you're like, shit, that's really them. Sharon Osborne really looks that, that good at like 85 or something. <laughs> 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 she is no bad. <laughs> <laughs> See as you're singing though, and they're all sitting there. See in your head, are you sitting or are you are you going, I fucking sound all right here, by the way. I've got a chance at this, or are you just focusing? No, because you're hearing all the other good singers Aye. come out and they'll Aye. get through and you're like, What chance have I got? Aye. So maybe I was in my head a wee tiny bit, but same again, I just went in there and I went, I'll just sing. Aye. That's it. That's mm -hmm. all I have to do. Do you know what I mean? They don't have to like me for me this is right. a singing competition mm -hmm. do you know what I mean but then there is aspects that you're going to get judged in your look your personality your right. background if they've got a story that they can make right. even about you almost like a character do you know mm -hmm. what I mean um, but no I was I didn't think oh I've, I've done great here because then after it Gary Barlow shot me straight out the sky and he's like I, I think it was alright I think you need to go back to school and he said he was too young didn't I, I was too young and I was like ah, come on and it's hard because when he was young he he did the exact same like take that and all that Aye. like cut me a break I never knew that till like, years later I'm told he's like that Gary Barlow's a he he he's on my son's back and all that but ended up end up like me after it Aye. for a bit um, but no I just went in there and just thought just go for it. Do you know what I mean? Get on to lose. It, mate, hundred percent. And then when you get the, you get three yeses. You just different clouds at that point when you're stoned in there. I am, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> boys, it but at the same time, I'm like, why is that Gary no put me through? Well, that's what I was why they all say that. And it was purely just him doing. He's saying you need to go back to school or something like that. something along the lines. Did like, that stick with you at the time when he said that? Right? Although you've got the free. Did that I, comment I, I, a wee bit like stuck my head going like what me going to school for another two years mm. what's what's what difference is that going to make Aye. looking back now it could be right because my voice could mature Aye. i could mature mm -hmm. and i do kind of agree with him looking back now but then at the same time i'm like if i didn't feel like i was ready i wouldn't i i wouldn't be here mm -hmm. i wouldn't set myself up for failure almost Aye. At the same time, I'm just going there and having my prayer. So it's aye, like, aye. it's shy way up your options. But um, I never stuck my head for too long. I was just like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I never like, hurt my ego because I never went in there being like, I'm a good singer and I'm going to do well. It was aye. just like, I like to sing and I just want to try this out. Do you know what I mean? And did you carry that? Obviously, for there, you're then going through the rounds. But did you still manage to keep that kind of, I'm just here enjoying myself? Or did you start to think, I could win this? No, 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 the funny story about the winning thing, it was like when I got to the, they brought the free chair challenge our year, it was the first year yep. I've ever done that, so uh -huh. it, was, it was like all these boys auditioning, there's six chairs, but they can swap them at any other Aye. time, so same again, I'm down in London, I'm there myself with all these just randomers, English folk that I never really knew, mm -hmm. um, and they say, right, okay, you're going to sing a song in front of 10,000 people at uh, Wembley Arena, um, but same again, you're going to be on at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. I end up on, I think, at half ten, eleven o'clock at night. Do you know what I mean? And they're like, ah, right, Nicholas, you'll be on second. Oh, no, right, you're going to be on no second to last. No, right. you're going to be on last. No, you're going to be on tenth or whatever. So mm -hmm. they kept just moving the goalposts constantly. Aye. And same again, you can hear other people all getting through and you can see it in their face because you've got that far. You're, you're, you're almost, not almost there, but you're, you're doing well. You've, mm -hmm. you've got your momentum. Do you know what I mean? Um, when I got to the six chair challenge, it was about half eleven at night. I'm mm -hmm. exhausted. Aye. I seen these boys go back and forth, and there was no seats right. left. And I thought, I'm going to go out here and and just try and get my best. Looking back now, the singing was not great. My voice Aye. broke in a few things, but I remember singing "I Won't Give Up" and I had the mic like that. And I remember when it like went to the like, the bridge or whatever or the key change. I took the mic off the mic stand and launched the mic the mic stand in. Right, who the fuck did Gam? <laughs> who the hell Gam? <laughs> Beyond or something, do you know what I mean? Else me, I've launched it, doing a I'm going to get a bill for that mic stand, I don't care, I want to show them that I'm ready for it, I'm like, ah, Gary, give me it, I'm ready, take me there. So I just launched it, dude, and then looking back, I'm like, what am I doing? It was even part of the plan, but it was just like, emotion in me being like, I'm ready, right. do you know what I mean? I want to, I want to show you that I'm right. ready for it and that I can compete with these old guys, because mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Growing up, I played football, I've got a younger brother, an older brother, and a wee sister, Aye. do you know what I mean? I know our house were full of banter, carry on, fighting, competitive, do you know Aye. what I mean? Aye. I wanted to show them that I had that fight in my belly, do you know what I mean? And it really did pay off because mm -hmm. the six guys that were on the chairs were all really, really good singers. But at that point, I think it, it changed for me because 
all the other, Louis Walsh did believe in me, but all the other judges like Nicole, I remember her being like, come on, like that. And then that's when I, I just take the mic, I just launched in the mic stand. We take guy in the background. Like, oh, <laughs> 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 uh, and then uh, after that, Louis was like, oh no, Nicholas, that was great. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I, when I finished singing the song, I just started greeting. I don't even know if I'm through or not. Emotion, but so, it was just emotion. And I was like, drained and right. I've been, by the way, and this happens in like months apart, all these editions. Mm -hmm. It's not like you go into Glasgow and then a week later you're, you're down in London. Like, this is months apart. It's all secret. You can't tell anybody. Aye. So I can't tell anybody at my school or whatever in case people find out. Blah, 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 blah. So, and it was like 11 o'clock at half 11 at night and I'm like, I'm, I just like felt, Aye. but I felt a weight lift off my shoulders and mm -hmm. I think that's why I, I, I get it so much. Aye. And then the comments after it were like, just, phenomenal right. do you know what i mean and then in my head then i thought right i could go through here but i didn't have enough time to think about it and then right. that's when louis said right nicholas i'm going to give you a seat but now i need to swap and it pans to the other guys and they're all sitting like that their hands like greeting and How all awkward that. Is that mate so awkward and see the boy that we switched with it was a boy that worked on like cruises for like disney and all that right like a really really good Aye. singer and he was about six foot five and there's me his name was alejandro i'll never forget it <laughs> So Lou decides to switch me with him and then oh. nurse me go up and cuddle him. It's like me. It's like me, Jimmy, Jimmy Cranky <laughs> cuddling the Jolly Green Giant. I'm like, sorry, mate. Sorry. And that was it. And he, he ended up getting obviously no kicked out, but he had to leave and I took his seat. Do you know what I mean? And it was Jeez. brutal. And then after that, I had to see him after it. And I'm like, mate, I'm so sorry. Stay in a hotel room after that. I was like, this is terrible. But I wanted to show that I wanted it more than anybody right. else. Right. Do you know what I mean? I think that we simple unrehearsed on the mic stand mm -hmm. was probably the best thing I'd done because looking back now there's a couple of wee bum notes Aye. but you can tell that I'm like do you know what I mean so but that was one of the additions I was like fine margins but isn't it aye 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 it's mental but I, I wasn't rehearsed just launched it down and I was like oh shit what have I just done <laughs> just what <laughs> I I'm going to find out. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, get a job to pay for this to get fixed I need to get my mum and dad to pay for it do you know what I mean I'm still at school well it worked though it did, I it did, and it's it's things that even to this day people pick up. They're like, I remember you song, I won't give up. And you guys were all sitting like that. You threw the mic stand, the coast, and all that. So it's a memory that, like sticks in people's heads. We Alejandro's like, yeah. <laughs> no, we Alejandro guys, but seven foot nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> How is that though? See, when you get to that stage, right? And as much as there's like thousands at the start, see when you get down to that stage, and there's only maybe 15, 20 years. See, at your age, how do you cope with that pressure? Because, as you say, you're sitting there and there's six guys sitting in chairs and you're, you want one of their chairs. They're all sitting emotional. How do you deal with it at <laughs> that age? I don't, I, I really don't know because after that edition, then it was 95,000 boys edition that year. And we, we were down to the final six. And then they final six went to the judges' houses. Right. And then for the final six, they cut it down to three. Jeez. So when I got to the judges' houses, I just said to myself, if I don't get through here, I'm never doing this again. Aye. This is Aye. brutal. Like, at that point, I started to stress and really, mm -hmm. really think about it and be like, is this what I really want to do? Aye. Am I good enough? I, I feel like I was always feeling like, am I good enough? Am I good mm -hmm. enough? And you're hearing the other singers. I keep going back to that, but you're hearing them and you're seeing them and how they look. They're quirky, they're good looking Are you always boys. making that a comparison? I, I, and, and then looking at uh, social media following all at the right. time, Instagram was just a thing. Right. Do you know what I mean? And, and Twitter, I think, was bigger than like, Facebook and all that. Mm -hmm. But I remember one of the boys that was on it had like 53,000 followers. And I was like, oh my God, I've got like a thousand, fifteen hundred. I'm like, he's going to win the show. And he had six pack and all that. Good looking Aye. guy. Do you know what I mean? Um, But I like comparing and then whatever. And, but when I got to judges' houses, I was like, if I don't, and I told Caroline Flack, mm -hmm. this, God bless her so I told her, I went, if I don't get through here, I'll never do this again. I mean, this is emotionally draining at that point. There's a lot. Aye. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Aye. And, and I, I, I'm keeping my whole secret the whole time. Aye. Well, that's the do thing. Do you know what I mean? I'm you going to school. Get a support network, have you? Aye. And, and, and at that point, when I got to judges' houses, the first edition already gets shown. So right, the press okay. and all that are already on me. Because they know that the show's obviously pre-recorded up until the live shows. Yep. So they're, they're phoning my mum and all that and, and appearing at my house, right, where's Nicholas in ah. the show? And then folk are like, contacting school and all that. And then people right. start asking me in school. They're like, oh, I've seen your first edition. Where are you now? You get like the boot camp next. And I'm like, no, I've already done Aye. the boot camp. I've done 
the first edition, a thousand years, the boot camp, then Judges Housey. So when they see the first edition, I'm already through boot camp and coming up to the Judges Housey. You can't say it. And I can't say it. First meet school. I, 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 I'm on the X Factor or that part. Of, and then everybody's like, how are you getting on a mat? I don't know. I mean, you just have to watch it. I'm doing like, you just have to watch it. You just have to watch it. And I, I, don't, I, I, didn't, I didn't know the people's not were going to phone my mom and all that. Aye, so they're phoning aye, me, asking for my aye. phone number and all that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like and, and they're, they show are telling me, like, you, if you say anything, you're out. Aye. Do you know what I mean? We'll just switch aye. in with somebody else because you're, you're going to ruin it. Do you know what I mean? The build up for it. So at that point, I was like, if I, if I, don't, if I don't get through here, I'll never do this again. But looking back now, I probably would. <laughs> but it's one of the things, that's what I was going to actually ask you. Like, see it at that stage. What's the what's the big the biggest challenge for you to try and maintain how you're performing at that point? Because as you say, people are starting to know about it. You're still going through auditions mm-hmm. at the, the latter stages, but how, what did you find the biggest challenge? Do you try to kind of cope with it? Uh, at that point, it, it wasn't like I was known. Aye, because because you're you're only get shown your first edition. Aye. It was probably later on, af- well after the, sh- well, no after the show, but like when it got to live shows, mm-hmm. that it started to become a bit of pressure. But emotionally, physically, mentally, right. at the judges' house each stage, I mean, they had us out in Saint Tropez in France, were just like out in, not out in the sun all day, they just covered not like, filming for hours and hours and hours right. for them to film you for like two hours to cut it down to literally like forty seconds right. or one minute. Do you know what I mean? And you don't know if you're coming or going. You're getting pulled for party post. Do you know what I mean? And I was just like, oh, it was just, it was just a lot. Do you know right. what I mean? But I just had to focus on, on singing. Mm-hmm. That's all I had to do. Right. I knew that I had, I had two songs I had to sing, mm-hmm. and I knew that I've only got one chance to sing each of these songs. Right. So all you have to focus on is just singing the two songs, right. and then that's when I, I kind of just then started bleeding myself. Going, do you know what? You could do all right here. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? You, you're, you're. You're obviously doing something right. You're right. not a bad singer if you've got this far. If right. you were shit, dug me, they wouldn't put you right. through. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I then started to believe myself a wee bit, but there wasn't no really. The pressure was just ugh, if I go this far and get rejected, what's it going to look like? I'll right. oh, mean, you're on the telly for two minutes. Right. Do you know what I mean? You right. get kicked out right before the live shows. I'd be like, oh, that would. I, I, right. I, I thought mentally that would crush me because you're literally the finish line's there and you just need to step over it. At that point, Aye. the judges chooses. Whereas, if I get kicked out before, like a boot camp or something, mm-hmm. people forget about that very quick. Aye. But it's when it's done to like the last six, and you're Aye. at judges chooses season. If you don't get through there, folk, ah, oh, you get kicked out. Do you know what I mean? And you're and just folk, before the light shows. Folk only see that as like, well, that's a couple of weeks. But for you, that's been months. Aye, months. Aye, me, so you've been me waiting. bite my tongue, been like, oh, I can't see anything. Do you know what I mean? So it was really hard to hide. Really hard to hide, especially with me having such a big family. Aye. Do you know what I mean? What about when you get past that point? When are you then allowed to tell people? Uh, so at that point, basically, you are just playing catch up. So right. I'm back. So I'm through judges. I'm through the live shows, and right. then I'll be back to school. <laughs> like the, the Tuesday or something, and I'm back with a tan, and people start me and I was like, hey, I think my mom took uh, my mom took me to the caravan. <laughs> I was just in Sandyland a lot. There's no sunny doing in Sandyland. Do you know what I mean? Like, where you been? I was like, like. And then that's when they started doing like, you were away doing stuff for X Factor, weren't you? And I was like, no, no, no. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, like that. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, it was so hard. Um, but when I started to tell people, I never actually told anybody. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously my mum and that, and my close family. Mm-hmm. And not even like some pals that I had at the time, I t- couldn't tell them because they couldn't hold their water. Aye. So I went back to school after the judges' houses, and then I can't remember how long it was later, but say it was like two months later. Mm-hmm. They flew me down to London and moved me into a house and all that for the live shows. And right. then it was Louis, Sham, Nicole, and Gary, and they all had three acts each. Right. So three, but don't know how many acts it was. I all in this big house. Right. And then you's got shown the judges' houses on the Sunday. Uh huh. But by that point, we're already no more through the live shows. Right. Okay. So we we're already moved into the house with all the other acts that are through. So we just get shown that on the Sunday. We're already in the house, and I remember waking up in the house. It was Lionel Richie's old house, apparently. <laughs> Had a swimming pool and all that. It was nice. Belt in house, by the way. Um, and we were in these like, bunk beds, and my bedroom window that I was sharing with the two other boy contestants looked mm-hmm. onto the front of the the, the, the front garden, the front drive, but right. it had like, big black private gates and big 
But she's not Aye. a... So I remember... <clears throat> I woke up on the Monday and I and I was up in the top bunk. I'll never forget it. And I rolled up the blind and I opened the blind like that. It was like something a movie like Ken McAllister and Home Alone. <laughs> and I just seen all these paparazzis up the fence. <laughs> 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 the blinds are like, you see what's happening out there? And the boys are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, crack that blind and look, <laughs> look outside. Oh, There's these guys up in, up up in the wall. Just taking photos at the end that moves because they obviously Jeez. knew they, they're all in this house. I don't Aye. know how they found that out. Um, and I remember when that Sunday, when they knew, when everybody knew, like the public knew, I was Aye. through the live shows, my phone went absolutely bonkers. It was mental. <laughs> and then at that point, I could obviously, I didn't have to tell anybody Aye. because the, the, Aye, it was the TV there. show obviously put it out there. Aye. Do you know what I mean? So I could finally be like, <sighs> After months you get and months, set months. of problems at that point, because everybody knows you. Aye, aye. At, that point. at that point, and then it just it's a different gravy completely. But when I entered the show in the, the January, mm -hmm. I think the live show started the first week in November. Right. So I had to, I had to not tell anybody for what best part of a year. Aye, what? almost. Do you know what I mean? So it was really, really, really hard. Really, really hard. And all the press and all that are smart because they know how obviously the X Factor works. So they knew that Aye. I knew how far I'd been the show Aye. and they were trying to be sneaky and catch me out and all that. Do you know what I mean? So he been 16, like, yeah, he's well nigh, nice, he's well done. We'll just phone him up when he was at his school or catch him outside his school. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but that, I'll, I'll never forget when I cracked the window, I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And I remember my phone just going mental that Sunday night and then when I woke up that Monday morning, it was like, it literally felt like your life just changed like that. Aye. And I suppose then, but you are 95,000, 2012. Aye, hitting don't live shows. Three boys, aye. How are you then feeling at that point? Because obviously when you start it, you're thinking, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. But you come through all that. You're sitting on live shows with 12 <laughs> people. Are you then going, hold on a minute here. I've got a shout out of this. I then same again, it goes back to... The three other boys, because the three boys that Louie had was me, Luke Friend, and Sam Callahan. Sam Callahan was the boy with the six pack, and the fifty thousand followers. Luke Friend was like indie guy, dreadlocks here, mm -hmm. and then there's me, a wee sixteen year old Scottish randomer. Do you know what I mean? Were you boy. the youngest that year? I was the youngest guy right. that that whole year. The, the, the two other boys were like seventeen, eighteen, and I was the youngest right. contestant. I, um, what was your question? So, would you do you feel more? Oh. confident about winning at that point or were you still thinking I'm oh, just going right, to see how okay. far it goes aye aye so it goes back to them then obviously seeing the boys seeing all the other acts and hearing their voices and whatever and obviously it's Sam Bailey who won right. it who was phenomenal I didn't think even when I was at the live shows mm -hmm. I was like I, I just want to have a good run at this right. when I got to the live shows when I actually got through at Judges Houses I remember being in a hotel in London and my, with my mum and dad and I was lying in bed and I was exhausted mm -hmm. and all one looked at me and went you could you could win this Nicholas and I'm like ah, shut up <laughs> so I'm going to my bed <laughs> do you know what I mean um, and she's like ah, no I'm being I'm being so serious and my mum wouldn't be bullshit or whatever she's like if I didn't think you could win this or do alright in this Aye. I wouldn't blow smoke up your ass. Aye. and I'm like ah, that's fair but then still in my head I was I, I, I never got to the live shows and thought I could win this Aye. it was literally just taking it week by week and, mm -hmm. and trying not to compare myself to other Aye contestants that were in the show, do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because you are who you are, do you know what I mean? And it, it's no doing to, the judges do have a say, but it's down to the public. Do you, know what I mean? you can have the X factor, but you need to have the likability factor and mm -hmm. all. If you're just an arsehole, then people know vote Aye. for you. Aye. End of the day. And I was the only Scottish contestant, which helped massively. Do you know what I mean? Because when Scottish people go on TV shows like this, they get right behind them. It turns into a Scotland v England thing, doesn't it? Aye. Aye. No Aye. matter what it is. It does. <laughs> it absolutely um, does. So it was, um, it was mental, but I never ever thought, I just literally just took it week by week, day by day. But and then how? at that point, I was like, this is great, I'm living in Lionel Richie's house, look at me. Aye, true. And I'm not at school, and everybody knows I'm an X Factor, do you know what I mean? It was like, oh, it was it was cool, I was I was just enjoying life, it was mad. What about the, obviously you've got the judges there, and you've got the producers, etc, and there's been loads of things in the press since about how contestants are looked after, how they're supported. How did you feel with that when you were in that that bubble? Uh, it's so weird because somebody contacted me a few months ago about doing something with the BBC and all that and talking about it. It's not that I wouldn't bad mouth them, but don't 
cut off the hand or something that fed you. What's that quote? I don't bite the hand. I don't bite Aye. the hand at Fiji. I do not I mean. And X Factor gave me a platform that set me up for hopefully the rest of my life. Do you know what I mean? But my year, it wasn't really that bad. I, there was a lot of long hours filming. Mm -hmm. It was emotionally and mentally draining. Right. It was, but it, I wouldn't say we, we didn't get bad treated. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That's what I'm saying. We're living in yeah. Lionel Richie's house. Yeah. We've got security. We've got a chef mm -hmm. and we've got a swimming pool, which we needed because I was under 18 and I needed a fucking lifeguard there for me to oh, go swimming. Joking. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I was like with Ken McAllister and my shorts were like that. Can I practice my cannonballs? I like that. No, you need a lifeguard. I was like, what? <laughs> Everybody else could get in because I'm under 18. I'm like, no way. So oh, they're like, oh, Nicky's man. gone swimming today. Security guys in. But um, no, they, they, never, they never really treated. It was just a lot of filming and back and forth and goalposts changing right. and people having say on like what you wear and what right. songs you sing mm -hmm. and that's what I'm saying. They almost like mold you into like a character. Yeah, they yeah. need to sell you. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And these people know what work. And for other people to get told what to do, they're like, well, I don't, I don't accept that. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Whereas for me, I was just going with it and going, do you know what? It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, but I wouldn't, I would, they wouldn't be like, right, say this. Because right. like putting words into my mouth, but they'd be like, try and say it like this. Right. Do you know what I mean? But hearing some of the stories I've heard, it's horrendous. Right. But there's nothing that I can really say that's like gossip that's like really, Aye, really bad. Your, do you know what I mean? From my experience. No, other people that were in the same year as me could maybe have a completely different story. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But um, no, they did. They looked after us, took mm -hmm. care of us. Do you know what I mean? But it, it was hard. I'm not going to say it was like walking the park because it is. Like, do you know what I mean? And how close were the judges to you guys? Did you have like access to them or was it just <clears> on the shows? Or? Um, so on a Monday... So obviously Lou Walsh is my judge, mm -hmm. who by the way is brand new. Right. Every second word that comes out of his mouth. Yeah, a stick as well, doesn't he? Either fuck or C U N T. <laughs> he's just mad, mad's a box of frogs. But he's honest, upfront, Aye. and as blunt as you can get. Aye. Do you know what I mean? I remember saying it, I remember when he put me through at judges' hussies he went, Nicholas, you're through, but then when the cameras cut, he went, You need to lose weight. Wow. I'm like, what? Well, I'm starving and all. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But <clears throat> Louis would come in on a Monday. You'd pick your song for that week. Mm -hmm. So then he would he would sit down and talk and be like, I think you should sing this. I think you should sing that. Then he would fly back home Tuesday, Wednesday. And then we would see him in rehearsals on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right, okay. But then I had his phone number. So if I just wanted to Aye. phone him, I could back. It's happening, Louie boy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, so the judges, I was close, very, very close with Louie. And same again, like on the live shows on a Saturday, whatever mm -hmm. night. He would be getting his makeup done and all that. And they'd have people in his dressing room and mm -hmm. I would just chat with Don, just walk in and help myself. Aye. Um another judge I was really close to was Sharon and Nicole. Right. Nicole Sharon's guy, I remember one night it was like a Wednesday. Random. <clears throat> Excuse me, and we were all just sitting watching something the tell I can't remember. And uh, she just appears at the house <laughs> and she's in like tracksuit bottoms, a jumper on and all that. Right. Looking quite quite good. <laughs> and uh, it was at the time she was going through something with Lewis Hamilton. Oh, because he used to go out, didn't he? Aye, so she, oh, took, us up to, she right. took us up to one of the rooms and we're all just sitting with all that all that acts and she's just sitting on a laptop just playing songs that she's recorded and mm -hmm. telling us really nice stories and I was like, to look at you, you're fantastic, but right. you as a person, you're incredible. Right. Like, she looks good in telly, right. but she's even better looking in real life. Right. And she, you can just tell she's got a good heart and she's right. a genuine person. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> and like that surprised me and I got right. really close with her. Do you know what I mean? She used to call me Nicky Blue Eyes and all that and I was like 16 and I was like, oh, stop it. I'm 26. I'm like, oh, I wish she could say that to me again. <laughs> Please. How surreal Please. is that? Bro? Mad. 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 And even <clears throat> people still to this day like, oh, you hear from Nicole with Nicky Blue Eyes and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell me about it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean Nicole. Um, but really close to judges. The only one we weren't the close to was Gary. He kind of right. just done his own thing, but mm -hmm. I remember that one time Nicole came in and whatever, and she, she always ever said, if you get any questions or anything, like, this is off camera, this is right. just walking down the hallway in the studios, mm -hmm. any questions, whatever, just ask me if anything, what you talk about, do you know what I mean? So all the judges were like, really nice, mm -hmm. and same again, like with Sharon Osborne, I used to just walk into her dressing room, my dog's not, we're running about, she's getting her hair and all that done, and I met Kelly, <clears throat> Tell you a funny story actually, I was sitting with Sharon because she was like almost like my grandmother, but right. same again. What you see is what you get. Aye. And really, really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make it quick. So I'm sitting in the room and Sharon's got my hair done and all that, and Kelly's there and her son Jack's there. And um 
Aussie comes walking in. He's like, oh, how you doing, man? I'm like, oh, nice to meet you, mate. Blah, 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 blah. And he's weird. These two other guys, right? Just dressed up in black, look kind of like heavy metal. It's like his pals, that's what I just assumed. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like talking to him and I, I say to Jack, I remember I used to watch you on, was it Adrenaline Junkie? When, uh, he, when he was at uh, like Danny's rehab uh, and he was jumping out of planes and all that and trying to like recover for drugs and alcohol. I was telling him about it. I was like, no way, I'm sitting in front of you. This is mad, blah, blah, blah. And you're Sam Osborne. Like, it's just mental, right? <laughs> There's big Aussie just sitting there. Hey, man, what's happening? <laughs> and uh, Louis comes in. He's like, what are you doing in here? And I'm like, just talking about it. And he's like, come here. So um, Louis then takes on his dress room. He's like, do you know who's in that room? I'm like, no, who is it? I mean, it's Aussie, Jack, Sharon and Kelly. And mm -hmm. the makeup artist and all that. I mean, no, the, the guys, it's with Aussie. I mean, no, he's like, that's the boys from Black Sabbath. <laughs> I'm like, ah. I went, who? <laughs> No, you didn't. So I phoned my dad. I was like, Dad, I was just in the room with Black Sabbath and Shard Osborne. No, he's like, What? You don't got a picture? I went, No, I just thought it was all these pals. He's like, You're a dick. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, no. I can't believe he said who? Mate, I know, but I'm young and naive. Do you know what I mean? It was terrible. And Louis's Lou, like, ah, Black Sabbath. I'm like, Who? <laughs> the colour drains the Louis Walsh. I'm like, What? I'm like, I don't know who they are. I went, I know who Ozzy and that is. I went, I've watched with the Osbournes. Oh my god. <clears throat> but all the judges man. were brand new. Sham was so nice, man. Really, really nice. Love that. What about what was the kind of best bit of advice you got through the, the shows? By who? Anybody. What, anybody? Anybody at all. What can I slick Be yourself. You? Aye. Be yourself. That, that's that Louis, Louis just said that just be yourself and Louis, Louis really believed in me mm -hmm. and and I think it was halfway through the live shows it was like week six he went Nicholas if you listen to me you could run this show mm. hands down so obviously he's done the show before and whatever but same again I took it with a pinch of salt I was like yeah, okay I need bother even at that halfway point even at that still halfway can point I... I because we don't we don't see like we only know who goes through you don't see until when the show's finished the voting chart aye. and it was always me and Sam Bailey neck and neck right, it was like her one week me the next week aye. her two weeks running me a week running then two weeks running whatever we never find out to after it but Lou obviously the insight of aye. producers being in the show for so long mm -hmm. contacts and whatever I just said just if you listen to me and believe in yourself I went, you could you could do really really well here mm -hmm. really well and that's what he just said he went just just listen to me I'll guide you I'll help you Tell me the truth, man. I'll never, I'll never fuck you over. I'll, I'll never, I'll no boy smoke up your ass. I'll Aye. tell you straight as I die. And that's mm -hmm. what I loved about him. Sometimes, mm -hmm. like that's what I'm saying when I get through to the <clears throat> live shows at Judges Suicide. Like, you can tell his weight. I was like, <gasps> so I hope he doesn't see me now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 but, um, it was just honest. He believed in me, and I thought, do you know what? I'd just be myself Aye. and just and just and just go with it. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was quite hard when when it got to further on in live shows when. They were saying, I this week's seventies week, and I'm like, I wasn't even fucking born in the seventies. How do I know seventy? Obviously, I'll know seventies songs, but mm -hmm. that's no my my mm -hmm. thing. And they were like, I was like, so I'm there, me on Google writing all these seventy songs down that I kind of like. Aye. Bear in mind, they'll give you the song the song on a Monday, and you need to have it learnt fully by the Aye. Saturday, which Aye. isn't a lot, but including everything else, it's all mm -hmm. piled on you, all the pressure, Aye. all the filming, all everything. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would write down a list of songs and then they they would look at it and I'd go back into them an hour later and they'd be like, Oh no, we're thinking about this song. And I'm like, Do you know what I mean? So so that uh, so yeah, that was hard. hard, like trying to like have a say. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then I would just say to Louis, I would just say to Louis, and then Louis would sometimes agree with him or sometimes agree with me. But right. it always had my best interest at heart. Right. Do you know what I mean? And his Aye. his advice was just be like, just listen to me, just keep doing what you're doing. That was it. What what was the real? <clears throat> obviously, when you get to that point, you're doing your different weeks, and you've got some of the judges bringing an artist to work with you guys. What was the real high point for you for for people coming in through the weeks with people that I met? Aye. Uh, it, growing up, I loved Celine Dion. Like my mum played like Celine Dion, went the house and all about the house, and everybody knew that I loved Celine Dion. And at that time, she just came. She was like coming back, mm -hmm. um, and she brought out this new single, and I played it about the the house. Full blast. Right. On the GBL speaker, I've got it booming. Right. Right. Celine Dion, I know. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm playing Celine Dion. <laughs> so, we're Celine Dion blaring. And uh, the extra factor crew are like, ah, somebody's going to phone you. It's going to be somebody really big. Just answer the phone whenever it rings. Right. <clears throat> so, the phone goes and answer, and they're like, ah. and I knew that Celine Dion was 
coming on the show on a Sunday to promote this single in the next right, couple okay. of weeks. Yep. So I answered the phone and it's this American guy. Hi, mm-hmm. it's Celine Dion's manager. We'd love you to meet her and all this. Blah, 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 blah. On the show in a few weeks. I was like, no way. And they're all like that, laughing like, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Ended up it was it wasn't Celine Dion's manager. It was one of the one of the, the boys that was in the band <laughs> putting on an American accent, taking a piss at me. <laughs> but I ended up I did meet Celine Dion oh, two weeks man. later when she was on the live show. Um and she was brand new, so nice, like sharing all that, meeting Aye. all these mad people one direction. They were obviously booming at the time. Aye. I was a massive one direction Aye. fan. Um meeting Harry Styles and all that and I was just mad, like different world, didn't it? Mental, met Elton John. Same again. Funny story with him was X Factor final. <clears throat> he's singing on the Saturday night. I think he's doing a jet with Gary Barlow, and I'm in the room, whatever. And I just finished singing, and the door goes, and it's this, this old guy in like his seventies. Right. So and same again. The X Factor film, and I'm like, right. right, that's a wind up. So I, like, uh, sorry, Elton wants to see you. I wants to meet you. I'm like, I ain't born, mate. I might have extra factor because obviously I knew the film through and all that. I'm like, aye, right, good one. You've already put this one on one a couple of weeks ago, you'll get me next time. The guy's like, no, no, seriously. I'm like, oh, right, okay, so me walking to this dressing room and it was taking me around this dressing room that we were in <clears throat> the Friday night before. Right. With dominoes and all that, we're doing rehearsal, the room stunk, it was a pigsty, just pizza and all that. And I walk in, I open the door and I'm waiting for somebody to just be winding aye. me up. And I walk in, it's got velvet curtains and all that, flooring a big it's got a big bridge and all that and it's like something I've never been in a hotel room like it in my life and I can't even describe it it's something out of a movie <clears throat> and there he's sitting oh, like, I feel like he distracts you on the original one right and he's got a Cartier Cartier or what watch called. watch look like a big disco ball he's like, oh come on in Nicholas come on in oh my days I'm like, no way first of all you're cool as hell and me <laughs> you're the same height this is mad <laughs> I've met, met somebody the same height as me <clears throat> <laughs> and meeting him was the weirdest thing ever. So I'm just sitting on this couch and I'm like, ah, like, pure, like, cross my knees, my hands, like that. Mm. And I'm shaking myself. And he's just talking away. And normal, he's like, dead relaxed. Right. Like, How are you doing? He went, you're doing fantastic in the show and all that. He went, you're doing so well. I've not seen a talent like you for many, many years and all that. And I'm like, ah, what? This is mental. I thought it was a wind up. I, I was like, no way. And I went, I went, can I have a picture with you? And he's like, no, can I have a picture with you? And I'm like, what? Mate, you're the old okay, John. What's happening here? What, this is mad. I'm like, mate, this is mental. No, but obviously I'm trying to play my cool, but I Aye. couldn't hear my hat. You're Elton John. That's class. I went, if I call you sir or just Elton or what, Aye. would you go by? He's like, call me whatever you want. I was like, all right, thanks, Elton. I'm cheers, best mate. Aye, cheers, <laughs> bud. Try to get your number. Did you get some? So meeting him was, was just mental. Some of the folk we met was just... And they're the nicest people in the world, aye, by the way. Aye. Nice. Like, even Michael Bublé invited in. He's like, trailer and all that. And we're just sitting in his big trailer thing, just chilling out with the boobs. Do you know what I mean? Man. It was mental. Me- but, but never see now. I'm mm. freaking out now because I'm older. I'm wiser. Aye. This is stories to tell, like, stuff like experiences aye. like this that I can share with people that mm-hmm. I couldn't get to share on the show. Do you know what aye. I mean? But aye, he's a pure mental scheme boy, fanboy. <laughs> don't have to change to me out, John. Do you know what I mean? But I can tell them now, Aye. and I can freak out now, but at the time it's 16, I'm like, ah, ah, it's all right, it's just Elton yeah. John. <laughs> I met Taylor Swift last week, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I'm shite myself, but I can't be like that on TV, like pure, like, I just need to like keep it cool. But now like I can tell all these stories, I mean, family, friends, people that ask me and I can share them. And it's great to be like, I'm so excited about 100%. it. Do you know what I mean? People are like, you should write a book with some of these stories you've got. Do you yeah, know I should, yeah. Like, you're living mental. a dream at 16. Aye, it's 16 ma- that, should, that, should be, that should be the title, Living the Dream at 16. Me and me out and that. Oh, <laughs> it's incredible, like, man. It was mad. It was mad. But at the time, obviously, I was saying, I, didn't, I never freaked out. But looking back now, Aye. older, wiser, mature, I'm like, that is mad. Aye. It, like, when I actually tell these stories sometimes, I think that people think he's waffling Aye. shit. And I'm no, it genuinely did. I couldn't even make it up. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, uh. Do you know what I mean? It, it's mental to look back now and be like, that is nuts. That is nuts. Kids, I've done you were at <clears throat> high school the year before it. The no, the same year. At the I, same was, year. I was still at school. You're do you know what I mean? You're about Elton John 10 I'm, months I'm, later. I am at St. Aidan's High and Wishy. Do you know what I mean? Pishy Wishy. <laughs> <laughs> 10 months later, I just sat me and said, Elton, what's happening? 
<laughs> the coolest part was he that all Adidas original track, he just sat like just chilling. I'm like, no way. No, it was mad. I'll, if you want to pop up some pictures, I'll send you some crackers. Aye. I've got Aye, some we'll really, really funny ones. We'll get some. Um, um, so you get to the final three. Yeah. How are you feeling at that point? At that point, honestly, I thought, do you know what? You've came, you've came this far. Mm-hmm. This is good. Yeah. This is good. And same again. Obviously, you do want to win it, but at the same time, I didn't want the pressure of you're the winner. You have to Aye. do well. Aye. So I thought if you come third or second or whatever, mm-hmm. you're all right. Aye. If you come first, it's like, because at that point, you you feel the pressure of the public and Aye. the whole show and the whole world starts to open up and your your brain starts to put two and two together and be like, right, this is where I am, this mm-hmm. is where I'm happening, this is where it could t- potentially happen. But same again, it just got to the point where I got that far and I just remember like my mum and that saying to me, look, you you could do well. Right. And this show and Lou Walsh saying like you could do well and people supporting me and all that saying you you could you could do well in this show. Even honestly, but like speaking honestly, when I got to the final, I, I, I didn't think I could win this. I was just right. accepting what, what, right. whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's in God's hands, it's in the public's hands, right. it's whoever's. Take it or leave it, just mm-hmm. go with it. Because that, that, that's how I think I just get through the show is just not thinking about it and no set myself up to a standard the way I, if I got there and I get kicked to it, I'd be like, oh, mate, you're a failure. Aye. <clears throat> but then I suppose if you're feeling that way when it does happen and, and Sam wins it, you're no in a bad this place. Happened. Because you're, you're mentally and all, do not know. Like, oh, I've just went through all that and I've known I won it. Aye. No, mate, take, count your lucky chickens and be like, oh, look, look how far you've got. 95,000 boys, just boys edition that year, and you're doing it the final person. You must be all right. Aye. 100%. And it was so weird because you took us to an England and something game. It was at Wembley Arena. Mm-hmm. No, Wembley Stadium, sorry. Right. And I think that Hodge, 90 odd, 95,000 or something. I remember looking about and saying to the two other boys that was with me at the time, who were obviously on the show looking, Sam, I went, look at all the... Imagine all these seats full, that all these seats full. Mm. That's all the boys at addition, just the boy category Aye. this year, and us three are here. We should be proud of ourselves. So for them me to get to the final, I'm like, Aye. I've won already. Do you know what I mean? I don't 100%. need to, I don't need to do anything else. Do you know what I mean? I just, and I genuinely was happy for Sam winning. And people <clears throat> still to this day say, You should have won it, should have, you should have won it. Sam Bailey's voice, who won it that year, she's an incredible singer. Aye. She, she is like a powerhouse, Whitney Houston, Celine Dion, amazing singer. And mm-hmm. when I hear her sing, it gives me shivers. Aye. And as a singer now, I hear hundred singers, but mm-hmm. she's just got that something that just sends the shivers Aye. rising up. Aye. And she's that singer. And I and I always say, I mean, most of the people that say it are Scottish, so they're probably a bit biased. They don't mean don't them. But um, she's incredible. Her voice mm-hmm. is incredible. And and for her. She that was her dream, her aye, whole life. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Um, for me, it, to say it was my dream, I'd be lying to myself. It wasn't mm-hmm. my dream, but then when I started to get better and better and better, mm-hmm. I thought, do you know what? I could actually do this. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Um, but her talent was unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I just didn't want to set myself up for failure to be disheartened. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, second's good with me. I'm genuinely aye. in my heart. I'm happy. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Genuinely in my heart, I'm happy. I do you still keep in touch with them? I I keep in touch with Sam now and again. Most of it all obviously based down south. Do you know what I mean? Um, look, friend, I'm, I'm very very close with him. We don't see each other enough, but um, I was we were one of my pals' birthdays last year and we went to Liverpool and I never knew he lived there. <clears throat> and I'm putting on my Instagram on my way to Liverpool and he's like, I live here. And I was like, no way. He came and met me and ha- hung out with all my pals that. and I just mate, I was remember seeing him. I was melted. I ended up getting kicked, <laughs> kicked to a pub for trying to play pool. <laughs> and I was just putting the balls in my hand and the boys were going, get him out. <laughs> so I'm back to the hotel, fell asleep for an hour, went and met Look, I remember just seeing him and just like embracing him and like, I had tears in my eyes. Right. So I'm like, drunk, drunk well, tears. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> um, but just the experience we went through with him and all was mm-hmm. like, was like mental. Absolutely mental, do you know what I mean? So I, I, I love him a lot. But I, I keep I keep in touch with him. Aye. I don't keep in touch with any judges though. Aye. Um I do have I do have like Louis phone number and all that, but it's not as if you just phone him up back. Aye. Happening. You're up to the assist the weekend, Louis boy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? 
<laughs> you made the song around Nicholas. <laughs> you lost weight yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, no, but it, but it was class. But look, look, friend, I love Aye, you. Stick with him. Aye. So, see, looking back, was there anything you would have done differently if you were doing it again right now? Yes, I, I feel like when I was at si- when when I was sixteen, I was obviously naive and never really had a care in the world. But then started to care. I wish that I could do it now mm-hmm. because with, with, I don't want to sound arrogant or fucking like a wee prick here, but I'm much more a better singer now than I was when I was 16. Aye. Cause when I was 16, I was only sit, I was only doing pubs and clubs and Aye. I was only singing two year max, a year and a half and then mm-hmm. into the X Factor. Mm-hmm. Now I've been 10 years this Aye. year since X Factor. I've grown so much. I know what songs I like to sing. I know how to, I know how to actually work my voice. I know how to breathe. I know my techniques. Mm-hmm. At the time, I never knew any of that. Aye. I had done singing lessons, but it was for I was cl- classically taught with a mm-hmm. piano, and do you know what I mean? So now I wish that my voice was as good now, or my voice was the standard that is now, yeah, that then. what it was when I was 16. But obviously, you don't, don't know that, do you know what I mean? Aye. So, so no, and, and then just like a couple of wee daft things like song choices and like coming off the show and dealing with lawyers, management, agents, labels, mm-hmm. stuff that Aye. me and my family and no one that I knew Aye. dealt with before. Mm-hmm. And and making mistakes with going with their own companies or their own people or people shafting you basically. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, and it goes back to earlier on, like I had stuff, suffered with like dyslexia and stuff in school, but I'm no book smart, but I'm street smart. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I never climbed a banana boat. I'm no daft. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Now I'm so much more wider to that. and so much more stronger than what I was when I was 16. I'd just be like, aye, aye, that's fine. Or blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. The commission on that, they would be like, aye, 20%. And then they'd end up making it 30%. And like, just wee daft things. Which is a massive thing at that which age Which is massive. Well, so. Aye, whereas now I just don't, I don't take your shit. Do you know aye. what I mean? Like, aye. if you can help me, let me know. I'll scratch your back, go scratch mine. Mm-hmm. Happy days. It's just now that I'm more grown up and seen so many opportunities pass mm-hmm. where I was so young, Aye. but then never had the guidance yeah. by people that never had my best interest. And it's so frustrating. And one thing I kind of regret was <clears throat> just before the final, Louis Walsh took me into his dressing room and it was like to me, when we finish this show, he says, I want to manage you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, shit. That, 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 could, that could be, like, a really, really big deal. I was like, right, okay. Like, I'll talk to my mum and that, blah, 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 blah. And I started talking to a few people. And then at the time, I think, like, stuff money-wise was happening with, like, Westlife and all mm-hmm. that. And the guys were only doing good. And there was, like, stuff in the paper about bankruptcy and all that. I never knew that at the time. Aye. Or a lot of stuff that I never knew mm-hmm. much about. <clears throat> and I remember looking back now, that's probably one of my biggest regrets. Right. Probably the biggest regret yeah, is no, no taking on Louis Walsh. Mm-hmm. Because even if all that was true, what I was told or read or had to believe, he believed in me mm-hmm. for the very first edition. Yeah. And he seen me all the way through at the end. Aye. You so already had loyalty, that relationship with him. My loyalties should lie with him. Yeah. If he didn't want to manage me, he wouldn't have to. He'd just do the show, Aye. get paid go back Aye. up the road and Aye. don't worry about me. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that's probably my biggest regret out of the whole experience mm-hmm. with him because now looking back, the contacts, the opportunities that he yeah. could gave me could have been relentless. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And the 26 year old Nicholas now would say, I in a heartbeat and do anything to make it work. Mm-hmm. If he tell me I lose 60 stone tomorrow, I'll do it. <laughs> but 16 year old Nicholas getting told by other people and people eerie wigging. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I wish I kind of still said yes. Do you know what I mean? Because where would I be in my Aye. career and my life? Mm-hmm. But I can't, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Do you know what I mean? But there, there is, there is times I talk about it and think about it going, yeah, that's a hard one. It's Aye, a hard pill to swallow. Aye. Where, where, where could he have took me? Aye. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't know if he's got Westlife now, but for example, look at Westlife now, they're fleeing. Mm-hmm. He could have just been like, I, I, I manage yous and I manage him and he's now the support act to all the arena, Aye. dates you're Aye. playing, all, all over the world they're playing. Mm-hmm. 
So just wee daft things like that, with labels, with management, radios, they, he would have had the contacts for the best of the best. Right. You've got, who do you know that's ma good managers? Louis Walsh, or managers that are known like for X Factor yeah. and all that. Louis Walsh is a manager and Simon Kill is a manager. Right. Do you and know you've already mean? got that relationship with him. And you've already got that. Right. And, 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 and knows, he, he knows what I can, that I, what I can offer. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he did genuinely believe in me. And I, I knew that because he spoke to me like after my very first audition. He went, I really like you, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like the Scottish Irish thing. But he, could just, he seen potential in me mm -hmm. um, more than anybody Aye. I did at the time. Mm -hmm. Aye. Which was so interesting. But Aye. looking back now, it's like... Small margins, isn't Aye, it? it's a bit of a bummer. So see, when you came out here, was there pressure on you to get like an album and things out or oh, how did it what was the time scale like for you when you left it all so when you win the show you get a million pound contract i thought you get a million in your bank about like, cool <laughs> but you don't you get a million what, what basically happens i think what happens is you definitely don't get paid a million mm -hmm. the record label that sign you sony or whatever mm -hmm. Invest a million into you, right? So okay, your music videos, you're shooting stuff, blah 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 blah. Yeah, you're writing, recording. <clears throat> so, when I come off the show, RCA approached me, right? Um, and he says, Look, we want to do an album with you, blah 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 blah, single. And I'm like, ah, Cool, right? What this is what you're going to show for, I right? At that age, same you? again, I don't know what a Aye. record deal is, I don't know mm -hmm. how it works, I don't know how you get paid, how you make money, don't know none of that. Mm -hmm. And then at this point, I've been given managers, lawyers, agents, people that. Ah, you're going to meet such, such and such as hotel, that's your lawyer, right. such and such, oh, right, okay, just sign here, blah, blah, blah. like it was all go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. So when the first album came out, they just threw me in this studio and like, ah, right, okay, let's just pick all the, the best cover songs we've done on the show and just put it on an album. And I'm like, no. Aye. I mean, I want to like, write original mm -hmm. stuff and maybe like put three of the top X Factor songs that I like in the album. Mm -hmm. So we ended up doing like the... The single, no, the single was already written. I think we, I think it came from a band called Scouting for Girls or something like that. Oh, aye, aye. So it was a song that they wrote, and it was just like them like pitching it to people, and I was like, I like it, and they're like, okay, just take it for you. We record it. Right. Whatever you doing, release it as a single. So everything was. I think the album was recorded within a week. Jeez. And was put out rapid, like within two or three months. Mm -hmm. It was really, really, really quick. Aye. Same again, looking back now, 26, older, mature or wiser, I'd have been like, ah, no, this isn't happening. Aye. And you can probably stick your record deal up your arse. Aye. I can do this myself because I know I'm, I know I'm a, a hot cake right mm -hmm. now that everybody wants, so I can go to maybe an R label, or mm -hmm. maybe no, maybe just date Aye. myself Aye. and make an arse of it. Mm -hmm. But looking back then, you're like, oh my God, RCA, and then you look into RCA and all the people they've had Aye. at the time, and I was like, we look at the mm. artist in you and think Aye, like, you're like mm, mental when you're walking into the office and it's all these plaques so 100 million this one 50 million you're like it's like I'm in the right place Aye. Um, <clears throat> but same again people pushing me to do things and mm -hmm. me getting pushed in a direction where I had no experience for the industry Aye. before so they're pushing Aye. me one way that I think's the right way but looking back now I'm like ah I wish I could change this this, this and this mm -hmm. but you can't look back and regret being like, oh, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that. Aye. Like, I was 16, I never really had a lot of guidance, do you know what I mean? Even my mum and dad and my family, like, they were there to help me and protect me and Aye. make decisions, but Aye. they had, they've never been in this industry before and they never mm -hmm. knew how many snakes are there. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But you live and you learn, do you know what I mean? You Aye. can't be like, oh, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you end up putting yourself in an early grave. 100%, mate. And did you get to a, did you have a point with all that when you're like, I don't know if I can do this with the whole company gig and fucking people that I don't know and I don't know if people have got my best interests at heart or was there a kind of tipping point? Eh, uh, no. No. Because I thought this is, this is meant it. Aye. Aye. Like, I'm going on an X Factor tour, I'm on TV here, I'm mm -hmm. doing this, I'm doing that. Same again, it was raining, it was a lot, I was exhausted. Aye. But I was like, this could, this could set me up. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That, that, that this maybe no last forever, but it could last for a long time. No, if I do this right, do you know Aye. what I mean? So there was never a point I was like, "Oh no, screw this." Mm -hmm. So why would I go through all that? Aye. Get to the judges' house and be like, "I'll never do this again." You get to the final and come running up, and then it gets a wee bit hard and for me to go. This is hard. I just don't want to Aye. do it. Do you know what I mean? I, I just I I wouldn't allow myself to have all these opportunities, mm -hmm. and just because I'm tired or a wee bit don't know what's going on in my world, Aye. and it's a wee bit mental at the time, just be like, ah. Mm -hmm. I'll just floss on the bank and I'll just Aye. go back to school and sit my exams. Aye. Ain't happening. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to run with this as long as I can. Mm -hmm. Do you know 
you know what I mean? But same again, it just comes into maturity and known the industry. Aye. Do you know I what I mean? I suppose it's, you're then famous at that point as well because everybody knows you. Aye. And that, that, that was weird. That was such a weird experience because w- when when we're in the live shows, they're picking up these motors and driving you to the hair and driving you back. It's in you, a bubble. You, if you want to go to, we, we used to go to the Asda down the road, <clears throat> get munchies and they would, you couldn't go for security and all that. I was like, that's just mad. 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night and all that, you're walking about Asda. And all that, right, hurry up, hurry up and all that. So it was mad. You're in this bubble and then as soon as you come out, well, as soon as the final finish, mm-hmm. I was up the road, I think by the Wednesday. Right. And it was just chaos. Right. Madness. <clears throat> well, you're the only the, person in the full country as well. It's not like the eight or they, nine English. They, they're they're trapped. No trapped you, but you're in this you're in this bubble and Aye. they keep you in that Aye. to protect you. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which makes sense. But when I got home, the X Factor final was on the eighteenth of December that year. And I went up the road, I don't know, the twenty fourth or something. And obviously I just chilled and whatever as I'm pulling up outside my house with paparazzi and all that. Jeez. Taking pictures and whatever. My mum had big, stupid, inflatable snowmen and <laughs> reindeers not in the middle of the air. Now, that's her neck. <laughs> and then a couple of days passed, just staying in the house, family, not come have Christmas with my family. And then on the 26th, that Boxing Day, my pal's like, oh, why are you going to Glasgow? Mm-hmm. The Boxing Day sales. I'm like, aye. Probably the worst thing I've ever done. Carnage. It was mayhem and we were at the four corners. Right. At Glas- in Glasgow. It was just all these people, pictures, and just I turned around. It was it was just like hunters. I mean, hunters are people just following me. My, my pals are like, we got a day. Like, a day this, is, this is crap. My pals are like, and there's these lasses all walking up, and people are like, I got a picture of your pal. My pals are like, aye, cool. <laughs> he's he's, like, he's a roofer or something, you know what I mean? An electrician, I'm like, aye, pure clad, man. It's my pal, it's my pal. So I end up going into the, the pizza hut, mm-hmm. and you obviously get the big bay one day and then you've got the door and then the other one day. Right. And I'm like, can I have a table for four or whatever it was? So they put us in a table and they put us right in the bay one day. Mm-hmm. And it was, I felt like a, a monkey in a cage. So like, you know, you go to the zoo and you chop you chop right. the glass and they tell you not to chop it and the monkey's just looking at you like, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> they had me sitting, scan my pizza and honest to God, it was just full of people flooding onto the road and all that. And I'm like, ah, what am I going to do? Aye. And why are they filming me eating pizza? Have I spilt something? Or they look like a fanny? <laughs> And I was just like, what is going on here? This is mad. Um, and then the staff come up and went, look, you, you, you need to do something. I went, I, like, I went what? What, what do you want me to do? They're like, you maybe have to leave. I was like, right, okay. So I end up putting, I think, a pizza in the box and they went, you can go through the kitchen. Right. When I mean, you go to the kitchen, it takes you to the fire door and right across to McDonald's is a taxi rank. Uh, oh, no, yeah. Yep. Is it, uh, what's the name of that venue next door? The Classic Grand? Yep. We went, just jump a taxi there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm like, cool, no bother. But all these people are just sitting watching me, so they're watching my every move. So they see me go through the kitchen. They just put two and two together. I come out the fire door and start running for this hackney and we jump in it. And I'm like, the guy, just drive, just drive. The guy must have thought we were shoplifters or something or just done something. And the guy's like, ah, looking, and there's just all these people chasing this taxi. And I'm like, ah, no. He's like, ah, what is it? What is it? He turned around. Oh my God. Why are you the other guys with this? I'm where you gone. And, and you could tell me, mate, it was mad. I felt like something in one direction. I'm like, ah, no way, this is mad. Just cha- chasing it. And the guy's going through the lights and everything. I'm like, Jesus. at that point, Aye. that was another moment when I opened the blind and I went, my life's changed. At that point, Aye. I was like, because you're in this bubble. Mm-hmm. And then when I was out it, and I, not that I needed security, or anything, but they just kept you protected. Mm-hmm. When I just went walking down the street then, it was like, it was mad. And I'm like, Aye. yeah, because w- when you're getting picked, back and forth up for the venue for the mm-hmm. studio you you'll you ask people ask for random pictures and whatever, but when you're walking down the street and you're back home you try to process like all oh, right okay that's why they right. just watch when they tell you, like uh, uh, wait they kind of tell you right this is how you process Aye. this experience it's like you're in this experience here deal with yourself Aye. there's some media training mm-hmm. blah, blah 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 say this say that but if dealing with the public Aye. It's something you just need to learn to deal with yourself, mm-hmm. which was mental. Did you ever get used to it at that point, or was it just a kind of constant? This is this is unbelievable. It was probably just this is unbelievable. Aye. This is mad. Aye. Aye, but then at the same time, it was like this is quite cool. Aye. These people are Aye. Th- th- these are supporting me, mm-hmm. and I and I, I never ever hate to, I, I never like to really use the word like 
bands, I don't like that, or the word famous, but mm -hmm. these are people that supported you, that right. voted for you. These are the people that are going to buy your music, come to your gigs. Right. These are the people that voted for you and got you to where you are. Mm -hmm. So if you want to stand and get a picture with them and you're hungover or you're no well and you can't right. rise, well, tough titty, right. you're doing it. Right. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I always think, do you know what I mean? I'd be doing a shite and a public toilet and somebody go, I've got a picture about that in the bar. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> do, 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 maybe not a shite, but I mean, like, or even eat my dinner, but I, I never bother. But I always think these are the people that got you to where you are to this day. If you're saying no to them, they go back to a family, oh, he's a bastard. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just myself all the time. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? What you see is what you get. Aye. I like to think. Um, so when people ask for stuff, I'm, I'm more than happy to do it. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because you can't turn around and go, no. So like, who do you think you are? Aye, listen, you know as well. But then people have you up to a standard and Aye. all, whereas if you do say no. Well, you've got two, you've got the people <clears throat> like that, and then they've got the people that want to kind of bring you down. Aye, you know, keyboard gangsters, Aye. you're going to get that Aye. all the time. You're going to get that Aye. all the time. You're, you're going to, it was hard at the start. <laughs> My brother's getting into trouble a couple of times. We've been outside a pub or something years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And someday... I was just talking to him about this and somebody walked by behind me and went, I well, that we fucking stupid C U N T or something and the guy went to spit on me. Right. But I just see my brother go like that. I go, <laughs> What's happened there? Mate, the boys just flat out noses like I'm what I thought I'm like, what's happened? The guy sat his stone, he stood up and tried to spit on me and all that. I'm like, What are you doing? What's happened to you? Oh, Never met this guy in my life before. Don't know who he is. Nothing. And then my brother ended up getting left it but then I end up getting out and whatever but um they have to deal with the consequences Aye. like my wee brother <clears throat> the other week there with his job somebody walked up and said something to him mm -hmm. and he's almost lost his job Aye. but no he, violence out of him Aye. just like being like ah away you go mate and like pushing him Aye. or something um my brother gets it at his work my wee sister gets it at her school Aye, she gets it at her work Aye. um so it's tough on them mm -hmm. Aye. Me, I couldn't give a monkeys. Aye. Say what you want. If somebody walked up to me and said so, people don't walk up to you and say stuff to your face. Just say it on Facebook or whatever, Aye. or they'll have a wee snide comment, or he's put on the beef, or his the message is that. Profile, isn't it? Aye, it's a... blah, blah, blah. Um, but never once touched with the bar end and walk up to the street and say, and see if they did, I'd be like, have a good day, mate. Aye. Are you happy? Aye. Are you happy to get off your chest? Cool. Aye. Cheer it on, mate. Aye. Disney bother me because. I'm a lover, no a fighter. Mm -hmm. I couldn't fight to save myself, do you know what I mean? But Aye. if shit hit the fan, do you know what I mean? I would pull it run away. <laughs> 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 Got to try to say something pure hard there. Like, I mean, I'd just mouth him or something. <laughs> nah, I'd pull it run away. But, um, Aye, it's, it's it's hard on my family. Aye. Like, my brother's older, he's a, he's a year and a half older than me. Mm -hmm. My wee brother's in his 20s, my wee sister's 18, so now they're at the age and all their pals know who their brother is. Aye. And Aye. They get stuck a lot, mm -hmm. which for me, upsets me more. 100%. Because I'm like, there's no way of me fixing this. What, what, what do I do? And I feel mm -hmm. like a piece of shit, to Aye. be honest. Um, so that's really, really hard. Aye. Really hard. But people on Facebook, oh, it doesn't bother me. I just delete their comment. I'll just not even reply to it. I'll just Aye. let folk just batter into them. But like, ah, you're an arse or whatever. Aye. Doesn't bother me at all. Because um, I think if you do start to let it bother you, mentally it'd be draining. Oh, aye. be too much we just loving your head all the time I constantly and you be overthinking things and whatever it's I I try not let it bother me but there is times and there is comments that have bothered me but nothing you can do about it and I feel like you responding to them mm -hmm. is what they're wanting aye do you know what I mean aye their actions is going to get a reaction and you oh, reacting back to them they're like oh aye. we've got them where we want them but just reel them in do you know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. you just start losing it on Facebook and look, looking at it. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Whereas you're just better to just delete the comment. I it'll still be in your mind and then dunno. Know, I can talk to my wife about it, which is class, Aye. do you know what I mean? She's Aye. like, who cares? Let them bat in. But there's times as well where she's seen comments and she's wanted to like mail the person or Aye. write something underneath and I'm like, ah, don't do it. And she's like, No, but I'm gonna, I want it. And I'm like, Aye. don't like forget about it. Don't, she, don't. Well, she's feeling the way about you the way you feel about your brothers and sisters it's that kind of aye the knock on aye yes. it's hard isn't it yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's hard um, and sometimes it is it's, it's hard to just bite your tongue but it just happens when you're in the public eye you can't aye. be on Facebook telling somebody F off because the paper end up picking up being like aye. such and such said this to such and such and just make a whole thing mm -hmm. you're like so that you listen mate so that you listen to Scotland <laughs> <laughs> see 
see, obviously, after X Factor, you've done loads of gigs, loads of corporate events, you've done loads of musical things. When are you at your happiest? Are you at your happiest when you're doing your own thing, when you're performing for people? I, I when I'm when I'm singing, when I'm working, when I'm on stage. Mm -hmm. Like it's so weird. Like there'll be times when I go to gigs and I'm like, I don't know what I'm walking into here, and I get this pure like sick and nervous feeling, and I'll, and I'll phone my wife. Even now, I, I mean, even now, I, I just get nervous because I don't know what I'm walking into aye, sometimes, and in, in a sense, and I'll be on the phone to the wife and whatever, and then within the first song, it just all my pro like it's so. F I, I don't know if this would be like the same like for you or for anybody, but if you get any problems, I feel like as soon as I start singing or go on stage. That, that disappears right. that's not you see right. when I come off stage it comes straight back into my right. head but in that period of an hour or whatever it is mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm performing it, it, it doesn't even cross my mind mm -hmm. at all you're just in that zone just in there I enjoying it loving it it's great Does it, and it's so good because I do a lot of the stuff myself now I do have management and agents and stuff now mm -hmm. but same again it's try to find people you trust Aye. Try to find people that's actually going to go out there and work for you. Mm -hmm. All my gigs, I get them myself. Aye. I'm not scared to reach out Aye. to people and do you know what I mean and, and try and get myself work. I run a business at the end of the day, so I do my tax, my mm -hmm. invoices, my setting up, my contacting agents, my emails, my invoices, my social media, mm -hmm. my website. And, and top of all that, I've got my marriage and all that Aye. and whatever else, my Aye. personal life to obviously deal with. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes it's like, smashing your head off a brick wall mm -hmm. but i would never any, any other way because i'm Aye. blessed that 10 years later i'm still doing this mm -hmm. and still doing amazing gigs i get still get really really cool opportunities i'm yeah. still really really busy with work the only thing i'm no good at is social media i'm shite at social media <laughs> you, if you don't have social media you'd think i've just vanished that face there i need to get somebody actually to do social media because even look at the weekend there i gig thursday friday saturday and monday mm -hmm. And I remember putting it up. Are you on TikTok or that way? I, I was oh, on TikTok really? for a while and I was loving it, doing the live streams and all that. And then lockdown finished and I was like, ah, no, I need to get the house. And I had a credit because I ended up getting verified and whatever. And I built up like 40 odd thousand followers over like two months or something, three months. Yeah, you get a um, social media manager. <clears throat> I know, big time, mate. Big time. And not even that, I'm like, see if I had, I say this to my wife all the time, if I had somebody to help me with my socials, that would bring in so much more work than what I've, like Aye. i done a hundred and odd gigs last year which doesn't seem like a lot but if you narrow it down to like a friday saturday sunday it is a lot and Aye. then your odd stuff during the week um but i've had a, a social media person to help me push for stuff or just be relevant and post my life or where i'm mm -hmm. where i'm gigging whatever then people be like oh my god i'll put him for this i'll put him for that do you know what i mean get even more work mm -hmm. do you know what i mean i'm like i need to take because i've got like 240 250 000 on facebook turn on something on instagram and i'm like i don't use this to, to, to you know what i mean to, you've got an audience ready made do you know what i mean and it, 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 it's so bad i'm so Aye. bad at social media it's terrible when you think somebody at 26 got all the time in the world and i really do i really don't Mate, I'm 40. i do i do I'm but i don't i do but i don't <laughs> Um, I just need to make time for it. So if Aye. you know MD, please let me know. <laughs> oh, mate, folk will message you. Um, and I know folk will ask about this, so I'm going to ask you, will we see another album? Aye, definitely. So what happened with the record label was they wanted to do another album and stuff, but the same again. They At that point, I was about 17, 18, and they were still telling me what to do. Aye. You need to work with this Aye. person, and you need to write songs about this and that, and this is the kind of songs you need to write. And I'm like, Mm. At that point, I just was like, that's enough. I mean, and then I spoke to my lawyer. They dealt with him and I ended up getting out of the contract. Mm -hmm. um, and now all my stuff is, I do it all financially back it myself, right. which costs a lot of money. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? To get in with the right people. But I've had, I've had setbacks. I've like messaged people. Like I'm not scared to like put, put myself out right. there. Do you know what I mean? Like message people to write with them. Do you know what I mean? They'll be like, aye, aye, I will do it. And then they'll not get back to your mm -hmm. agencies. It'll be like, I will take you on and then they'll just patch my message. Right. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I mu music definitely. I'm gonna I'm gonna have probably a single by the end of this year or some point this year. Nice. Um, and my wife always says to me, "Shouldn't you've not wrote a song for me yet?" I'm beginning of five year, married There's three years. So, so I'm alright. I better get something done with her. Keep her happy <laughs> and then and then do some and then do another one. But, um, no, new music definitely. But same again, it's it's just 
doing it myself and, and now it's so weird because now I have so much more to sing about and talk about because mm -hmm. I'm older now Aye. I've had life experience after the show mm -hmm. I've been through relationships I've been through heartbreak and now I find my, my wife who's Aye. the best thing in the world so I can just write Aye. all the good stuff about her do you know what I mean rather Aye. than be like 17 be like I pure love her and <laughs> loving my life and you look back and you're like no she was a total scud book do you know what I mean <laughs> 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 but I, I've, I've something to, to talk about now to, to get off my Aye. chest do you know what I mean and, and meeting my wife and all that just opened my eyes up to the bigger picture of like it's mm -hmm. crazy look at life do you know what I mean now I have stuff to actually go and write about Aye. so I definitely love it right I'm going to give you some quick fire questions oh no as is my new tradition okay somebody you'd love to work with MD let's go let's oh, go global uh, Bruno Mars He's, he's disappeared a wee bit the last couple of years. I know, but he's Bruno Mars, isn't he? Aye, he can do what he wants. Aye, he can do what he fucking wants, can he? Um, venue you'd like to play a gig that you've known? Uh, the bar is. How has that not happened yet? I don't know. It's, it's so weird. Like, I don't know. I really don't know. I just think that I'm scared to commit or even ask to do something like that and it doesn't sell, if I'm being brutally honest. Why would it no sell? Come I, on. I don't know. I, I don't know because I'm just shy at social media people. I, I remember him, but what's he been up to? Like, I kind of guarantee thing. you. But how many does the bar is hold? Um, 2,500 or something? Nah, 1,300. Is that it? You're, you're, no, you're telling me you're not going to sell out a 1,300 venue. Come on. I would, I'd like, but same again, like there's a lot. I'm actually, I've not announced it, but I announced it on here. The tickets are on sale. I'm doing a gig at Motherwell Civic. Right. <clears throat> and that holds 400. Because when I did the X Factor Homecoming, that's where we went with Louis Walsh uh -huh. and all that. So they couldn't give me the bigger room for this year, so they gave me the, like, the small room. I'm like, that's cool, we're going to do like, a 10 year celebration right. with X Factor. And even me putting on that gig, I've fought inside my head for a whole month for fashion day. I'm no not, chance. I, it's just due just to like, financially, I'm putting all this Aye. out there, do you know what I mean? And I, this could be a, a total piss up, do you know what I mean? This could go down like a wet balloon. So. I do have self doubt still right. to this Aye. day, and even though I'm I'm doing gigs with two, three, four hundred people, mm -hmm. it's just be like, cause you're doing that by yourself. Aye. Do you think you could actually do it? And it's a lot of self doubt. One hundred. And even like my pal, like, I said to one of my pal, you and shout at him. Like, I says to him about um, doing the one that Mo's having. He's like, I'm not a dick, mate. Think you'd be able to sell it? And I was like, Well, I I done it in two thousand and. 18 or 19 and done the bigger room mm -hmm. and done like seven or 800 tickets there I went I think like a couple of years later I'd be able to do it Aye. but just like me things like that oh, just just mate. self doubt is there you're, you're no human if you don't Aye. have it do you know what I mean Aye. but the baddest <laughs> I'm tagging them in this way I'm, I'm going to make this happen if this happens I'm going to be front you row by the way I'm fucking supporting you <laughs> <laughs> oh man um Who's your favourite band? Who do you like? Oh, bands? Band or singer? Oh my god. I don't even know where to start. It's like people ask me all the time, what's your f who's your favourite singer? I don't know. Probably at the moment, favourite singer, a country singer called Morgan Wallen. Right. He's okay. amazing. Now people will be like, ah, right. My wife's obviously American and mm -hmm. I hated country music before right. I met her. But now I'm a total country fan and he's like one of the big dogs, you know, and he's... You're going to write a country song, aren't you, for your wife? No. You can see this coming. Vocal slag me like this, we how Billy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Morgan Wall and I, he's class. Right, okay. Favourite X Factor, Judge? Can I say my least favourite? <laughs> I mean, I think I know it's going to be Favourite X Factor, Judge? Oh, uh, Nicole, just because she's absolutely class. Looking, right. And a good person. And Sharon was your least favourite, is that what you're saying? No! <laughs> Gary Barlow's my least favourite! <laughs> Kidding you on? No, Sharon, I love 30 bits. Most famous name in your phone? Phone book? I don't know. I can't think, that's a really hard question. Mm. I'm sure I've got... No, I don't... Gotta say Subo. Aye. I think there's, there's other people I've got, I just can't think off the top of my head. But I've got more famous people than Subo, I think, but I just, I can't think who I've got. Sticks in your head. Aye, it's one of the ones you look through and you go, oh my God, I've got his number. <laughs> <laughs> Sh uh, no, Sharon Osborne, I've got her number. I can't believe 
You said Subo first, and you get Sharon Osborne in your phone. Just because Subo's Subo, ain't she? Local hero. Aye. Aye, Sharon Osborne. Nice. Nice. Still can't believe you never recognised Black Sabbath, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, most random place you've been recognised? Oh. That's such a hard question. The most random place? In a bar in America. Aye? Aye. And it was a local bar just down from my wife's right. in Florida. Somebody noticed me. I was like, what? Like, yeah, we watch you, man. I was like, what? <laughs> Do you know what? I would love to go to like, the Philippines or something. Because a lot of people from the Philippines are all comment my stuff and all that. Just walk down like somewhere in the Philippines, see if they notice you. If they don't, then at least you get a holiday of it. Aye, that's <laughs> what this is true. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> something about yourself that nobody would know. Uh, I took a cardiac arrest and died when I was 11. Jeez. Aye. And X Factor tried to use it as a sob story and I told him not to. Fucking well, let's vote for him because he took a cardiac arrest and died. This The sob story vote, I told him no. So have you still got issues with that? I, or? I get diagnosed with long QT syndrome, which is basically like a, a regular heartbeat, is that the word? Right. I just take medication just to me, basically try and control the beating it. Jeez. Bye. That was mental. Same again. Mad story. Playing football. Hell, what scares you? Uh, in what way? Anything. Anything. Uh, money. Right. I always worry about money. I, it, like it scares me as in I've always been a worrier. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because Aye. you've you've been so successful when 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 you've been so young. And it's like life's like a roller coaster like that, and that's like money. Mm -hmm. But my wife's taught me now that money comes and goes, but money will always be there. You always work, you always make money. Aye. But I've always because like when I was young, like I, like I made a lot of money, and then when you get older, you start to come down and buy stupid things like oh shit, it's not what it used to be. Then it goes up, and then it comes down like that. So it's just try to balance it, balance it. Because now that like, I'm married, and do you know what I mean, and um much more mature now with my mm -hmm. money than I was when I was younger. Aye. So I just worry about it. But I always worry about it. Right, okay. Even w w with the whole X Factor thing, I, I, and when I was doing what really, really well and make a lot of money mm -hmm. very quickly, I was worried about it then. I went, what did I do Aye. with this? How, how, like, do you know what I mean? So I worry about money. Did you have any mad purchases? Oh, hunters. Aye. I had a 35 grand birthday party at the Radisson Blue. Okay. <laughs> An 18th. <laughs> and then top of that, I bought myself a brand new C-Class Coupe Twenty odd, thirty grand, something. Most people are their 18th in a bowling club. I know, <laughs> mental. And you know the funny story about that is, I did I spent all that money at the Radisson Blue, right? They knew my 18th wasn't until that that the next day, twelve o'clock that night, and up to the bar at eleven o'clock, and they couldn't serve me a drink. I mean, can't sell it at twelve o'clock. I mean, you having a laugh? You paid all that money. Paid all that money, so I just go in like that. Give me a cola. Sunday bought me grey goose. Don't even like it. Like oh, that. <laughs> we pulled myself a big double. Fucking hell. But um, I bought some stupid things. How would your how would your pals describe you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can even speak to him. He's a wee arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, folks, yeah, he's a wee arsehole, but I'm, I'm, I'd like thinking mean like in a good way, like he's a wee arsehole. Aye. Aye. Only up here would you recognise that as aye, a term but, of endearment? Aye. In, in Scotland, it makes sense. In, in England, you'd be like, don't get near him. Aye. Aye, he's a wee arsehole. <laughs> He's a good guy. I like the guy. <laughs> Is it true that when you first met your wife, she was drunk and you were trying to get away from her? Yes. How do you know that? Mate, I did my research. <laughs> I did my research. <laughs> Aye, so I was I was singing on a, a cruise in America and she was like, where's the, where's like the after party and all that? Oh my, <laughs> what a roaster. I mean, just go to the nightclub down there and then we just ended up talking for hours and hours and hours and I'm like, Three in the morning, me and her just talking. Started to sober up. I didn't even know I was grabbing her, but it's not over <laughs> But aye, she was drunk. She was drunk. I was sober. I was working. So that could have went very differently. Oh, aye. That could have went downhill. Jeez, man. Um, That's I, How do you know that? Mate, I, just, I do my research. You can't, You're good at this. can't accept a guess and no, no, these things, you know what I mean? Um, who was your childhood hero? I always like to know that. Childhood hero? Probably my papa, right? Who nice. recently passed. Um, 
a year ago there. Looking down, I'd probably say he was like my hero. I always took me like the football when we were younger. Um, taking to ice skating and all that football nice. training, picked it up for school. And I ah, was a total legend. And actually, this is his one of his rings that oh, my grand nice. gave us right. when he died. My wife got me this for my Christmas. Right. It's like a wee thing you need to take the chain off, but you look inside it and there's a picture of me and him. Oh, brilliant. Inside it. So uh, he he was probably my hero and I, I was a grandpapa's boy. My grand still lives, but Aye. Um, lives on to tell the tale. <laughs> <laughs> but my papa was my hero, definitely. Love that. Um, last one. So for anybody, obviously we, we don't have the X Factor as, as much now. So there's rumours that it's coming back and there's different things. But for MD... 16, 17, who's maybe in that position you were in, maybe doing a music show or they're, they're going to sign with a company, what advice would you give them based on, on your kind of journey? Stick up for yourself. Aye. <laughs> um, try and get opinions of people that's been in the industry before. Mm -hmm. Because when people say, well, when people used to say, I'm going to sign my, my son or daughter up for X Factor, they love singing, I go... Go for it. I went, but it's as hard. Right. And financially for my family, it was hard as well. Right. For the whole weeks that we were on the live shows, my mum and dad had to fly down. My mum, my dad, my brother, my sister, mm -hmm. and my younger brother, five right. of them. Flights for Aye. five of them and the hotel for five of them for the Jeez. Friday to the Sunday for 14 weeks straight. So financially for them, Aye. it was a lot. <clears throat> for shows like The X Factor, mm -hmm. for example, but I get professional opinions mm -hmm. um, and go with your gut and go with your instinct. And if it doesn't feel right or if it's too good to be true, then it is. No. That's in a nutshell. I love it, mate. What enough to you? Love that. <laughs> I'll see you at the bar, I'll see you there. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank Brilliant. you so much.